Frankel. Yes, 
said it where? And, and I said, I'm foxed. And then he started shaking and frothing at the mouth. And, and I said, well, and so of course their only understanding of Fox was Fox News, of course. So I said, well, Fox is more than that. Fox is 20th Century Fox, and Fox Searchlight Pictures, and Indie Arm. It's Fox Business, it's Fox Sports, it's Fox the Network, that has The Simpsons, and Family Guy. And a couple of decades ago, it had um, uh, In Living Color. Uh, these, these are highly, you know, socially conscious of liberal expressions of, of, of so so everybody goes to Fox for whatever it is their thing is, right? And so Fox also, if you didn't know, is the majority owner of National Geographic Channel. I don't know if you knew that. And, and, and so that's why Cosmos aired in 181 countries, because National Geographic has that distribution. And in so doing, it was 47 languages. So I want to thank you for making that happen. Because all we did was make the product. But it only did that because there was a public interest in science as manifested by the creativity of those who put things to images and to television. So this is a self, it's a, it's a we should all celebrate this fact. And so I, I personally want to thank you. I've got the highest compliment I ever got in my Twitter stream just before the first episode premiered. Highest compliment ever. There's nothing you can tell me tonight that's going to match this compliment, right? Here it is on the Twitter stream. Shh, Neil Tyson's about to crack a knowledge egg on your ass. <laughs> because, yeah, that's my new business card, you know? I crack knowledge eggs on any part of your anatomy that you want. Uh, so, that's that one. Uh, you know, again, this intersection of science, technology, and art, uh, it's, the art is what makes it all beautiful and accessible and, and makes you uh, feel creatively about it. And uh, this last year saw three films that have science, major films, you know, Academy Award level films with Academy Award level actors in them. Three films. The Theory of Everything, of course, was the biopic of Stephen Hawking. The Imitation Game. Oh, I got, I got, uh, yeah, The Theory of Everything. I don't know if you saw this film, but this actor becomes Stephen Hawking. Uh, there's no other way to explain it. And here's someone who's, there's a master of the universe, if you want one, uh, is, a, is a biopic on him, a scientist. How often do you get that? Count up how many films there are of generals or, or heads of state or, or uh, other people, but scientists not so much. Maybe that is changing. And here's the uh, imitation game, Alan Turing, basically invented what we think of as modern computing in the effort to crack the German Enigma code and uh, performed by uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. I think I accidentally said it was Benedict Cabbage Patch. <laughs> That's the right name. But there he is playing Alan Turing in this film. I, I've seen all these films, and they're compelling uh, uh, dramas uh, of these people's lives. And of course, there's Interstellar. For me, what was interesting about Interstellar is that the lead five actors, five actors, each one has been the principal actor in their own movies were in this one movie, and they all played scientists or engineers. And they were not just the scientists that you go to, oh, Doc, is the world going to end? Or, or is it the scientists that got co-opted by the evil person? No, these are real people with husbands and wives and children and grandparents and cousins and, 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 and love interests, fully developed characters as scientists. So my sense is that maybe science is trending in the world. And that can only be a good sign, especially if we can get it trending back here in the United States. So that's just a good sign in this past year. Academy Awards for its students. Right, so, so the lead five actors, like I said, were all scientists. And there is a, the, the actor in the bottom middle, he's also a scientist, although he wasn't a, a marquee name that you would see in the first list. Uh, and just, just an FYI, he was like the 
only black scientists and they killed them halfway through. <laughs> That's a start. We got to start somewhere. Okay. I'm happy that we got, you know, we got that going. <laughs> Take what you can get and work from there. Uh, this, we're getting this updates on news here. That's what we're doing. Congratulations to Europe. Europe, had, you know, had landers on the moon, on Mars, on Venus, two asteroids. They put a lander on Saturn's moon, Titan, and so Europe has been busy. There was a day when the United States would have led this. That's not the case anymore. It's part of uh, we're, we're fading, yes, in our sort of leadership in these in, 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 on these frontiers. Uh, but not only that, the rest of the world is also coming to understand its value the way we knew 50 years ago, and they are rising while we are sort of stagnating and fading. So the, the effect is, is, is a little more stark than it would otherwise be. In Europe, they also discovered the Higgs boson, noted by some as the God particle. The, this, this, this particle creates a field called the Higgs field, and if you're a particle moving through that field, it grants mass to you. So if you're going to be a particle, that's the one you want to be, because you just sit there and dish out mass to the particles that go by. This was why it got dubbed the God particle, because it's a kind of a, it sits on a throne and does this to all the other particles. Uh, this was, it was discovered in this, this was in Europe. We had a particle accelerator being built in Texas that with three times the power of this Large Hadron Collider at the European Organization for Nuclear Research, but Congress zeroed its budget in the early 90s, thereby moving the center of mass of particle physics from the United States to Europe. Thing is, you, just because you stop doing something doesn't mean others won't pick it up. So when I wear my scientist hat, I'm cool with this. But I'm born and raised American, so I kind of would rather we had done it, because that's the America I grew up in. Uh, but I, yeah, I'm not just going to, I mean, I guess that's how I feel. I'm saying, we have two hats here. I'm glad somebody's doing it. I would have preferred it was us, especially since we were almost there. We would have discovered the Higgs boson back in the 1990s, by the way. And by the way, this was discovered a couple of years ago, and the Nobel Prizes have already been awarded for it. So this would, this got done. This is there. Oh, and I... I I gotta tell you the best Higgs boson joke. <laughs> uh, this was invented. I, you don't always know who, where jokes come from. I know the person who invented this joke. Right? Uh, so a Higgs boson walks into a church. <laughs> I tested this with a Jesuit priest. He was t cool with it. Okay. <laughs> so Higgs boson walks into a church, and the priest said, "Sorry, Higgs bosons aren't allowed." And he goes and says, but without me, you can't have mass. Congratulations <laughs> uh, to Canada. 